All right. <laughs> I don't often do this, but since this is a Memorial Day, I will throw out some bones to my COVID-19 detractors and conspiracy theorists who I think are laughable because every time they come up with a theory, I said, to what end would such a massive conspiracy worldwide be viable and worthwhile? And the only thing they come back with is the control, which is something they don't need, and also vaccines, self vaccines. Why would a globe spend like $20 trillion in four months for a few billion dollars in vaccine sales? Makes no sense. But I found an article in, in the Los Angeles Times this morning that is a more viable reason why there would be, even though I don't believe it, because it makes no sense. But if you were to get me to actually consider a conspiracy on this level, this is the reason that it would happen. And I'm gonna read the article and then we'll get back to the reason. Coronavirus is making universal basic income look good. It's from LA Times, uh, May 22nd. And this is by Michael Hiltzik. He's a business columnist for the, for the uh, LA Times. And he does not like the, um, the lockdown. He doesn't like the idea of the coronavirus lockdown. But the idea of a universal basic income, a regular stipend paid to every American adult to meet minimum life needs has been bubbling around the edges of American politics for decades. With the coming of the coronavirus pandemic, UBI may finally move to center stage and stay there. This is a moment when the UBI idea is possibly going to feel more appealing to a lot of people, observes Lona Marsuku, a labor economist at the University of Pennsylvania who has studied what she calls unconditional cash transfer programs. COVID-19 has created a rare policy window where so many people are now tangibly feeling the economic insecurity we've been talking about. UBI had gained currency during the early stages of the current election cycle thanks to the efforts of Andrew Yang, who made the idea the centerpiece of his run for the Democratic nomination for president until he suspended his campaign February 11th. Since then, he has been promoting the idea via a nonprofit, Humanity Forward. I've been telling you about Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang was not running for president. He's there for the, for the global technocrats to actually push forward this idea. Continuing, universal basic income is a lot more popular now than it was even several months ago because of the clear need in our communities, Yang told me. The near universal experience of receiving $1,200 checks as coronavirus rescue payments has strengthened the appeal of the idea, he says. They liked it, he says. They didn't find that transformed their work ethic or made them into lazy wastrels. So there's a lot of experience that puts to bed a lot of the resistance that people had. The plot thickens. The hope of many fans of UBI is that the coronavirus crisis by exposing the gaping inequities in America's economic structure as the Great Depression did in the 1930s will usher a New Deal-like social revolution that will be beneficial to millions of Americans who have been marginalized by diminishing educational and employment opportunities. But it's wise to keep in mind that powerful entrenched political interests will strive to keep the present structure in place despite the pandemic. As I've mentioned in the past, the concept of universal basic income has long enthralled political and social thinkers across the ideological spectrum as diverse as Huey Long, Milton Friedman, Martin Luther King, and Richard Nixon. They're not all interested for the same reasons. Conservatives such as political scientist Charles Murray are intrigued by the possibility of replacing existing safety net programs wholesale, presumably at lower cost. Progressive wish to use UBI that patch holes in the safety net and the labor market opened by the modern workplace, such as the growth of gig work without guaranteed hours or pay. Definitions of UBI vary. Some involve phase out by income, though typically at higher income levels in existing safety net programs. Some direct the money to specific population segments, such as single mothers, though that makes them not universal at all. 
and many differ by the amount of income judged to be basic or even whether the payment should be enough for recipients to live on without any other income. The Canical UBI program will provide at least $12,000 per year per adult. The level advocated by Yang, I guess your $1,200 stimulus was a good trial run, right? That would cost an estimated $3 trillion a year or about two thirds of the current federal annual outlays. Hmm. The tax increase needed to cover that bill will mobilize political opposition. The program would have to be truly universal to remove the stigma attached to means-tested programs such as food stamps. A check would go to everyone, whether they're employed or not. No strings attached, no means tests, no bureaucrats examining your personal lifestyle or looking for hidden income. No politicians demanding that you seek out even a menial job or leave children in the hands of caretakers before getting the money. Payments would not phase out with rising income to eliminate that what conservatives decry is the poverty trap, when more income means the loss of benefits they posit. Recipients are encouraged to stay out of the labor pool, reducing the handout to higher income households to be done through progressive taxation. That's roughly the structure of what may be the highest profile UBI experiment in the nation. The Stockton Economic Empowerment Demonstration, or SEED, funded by foundations and private donors, SEED began providing $500 monthly stipends to 125 households randomly selected from among neighborhoods in the California city with household incomes below the city median. The recipient's median monthly household income was $1,800, so the $500 amounted to a significant income bump of nearly 30%. About 37% of the households are Hispanic, 28% Black, and 11% 11 Asian. Program began in February 2019 and will run until July. Though its organizers are trying to raise funds to continue for a further six months. Stockton UBI recipients spent mostly on food shelter utilities and stepped up their food spending in February, March to prepare for the coronavirus lockdown. The project helped to explode numerous conceptions about how recipients would spend unconditional windfalls, that they would binge on non-essentials or abandon work, for instance. What we've seen is that the vast majority of people are making decisions that are in line with decisions you and I would make, says Stockton Mayor Michael Tubbs, an organizer of the project. People are first and foremost spending money on necessities, food, shelter, utilities, etc., Tubbs said. There also are recipients using that money to better their economic circumstances, whether it's to go back to school, pay off debt, take time off from work so they can apply for a full-time job. As the pandemic emerged, according to program data, recipients stepped up their purchases of food to 46.5% of total spending in March from 34% a year earlier. That shows how widespread the issue of food insecurity is in our community and society at large, Tubbs says, but also that people are making decisions rooted in how best to provide for their family needs. Those findings resemble those from other examples of unconditional cash programs, such as Alaska's permanent fund dividend, paid out of the state's petroleum extraction fees and tribal dividends from Indian casinos. The money typically is not spent wastefully, but tends to improve social metrics such as education and children's health. The most important effect the coronavirus crisis may have on public opinion of UBI is the prevailing rationale that in the past UBI has been seen largely as a remedy for automation related job losses. This sometimes presented as the robots are coming. Jesse Rothstein, former chief economist at the U.S. Department of Labor now at UC Berkeley, wrote last year with his Berkeley colleague Hillary W. Hoynes. The coronavirus crisis has shifted thinking more toward the idea as a response to the inadequacy of America's economic safety net. The U.S. has a social welfare system that is pretty limited, says Pennsylvania's Marion Marin. All right, I'll put the rest of the article in the description so you guys can read the rest of the essay. I trust you guys will actually read it instead of asking questions. But basically, this would be the actual ideal reason for a what we call a hoax, if you want to call it a hoax. 
dead bodies in mass graves tend to make me believe that this isn't a hoax. But say that you do believe it, say that this all is, is one grand conspiracy that's so big that everybody's involved. This is the only thing that will get everybody involved. Absolutely the only thing that will get everybody involved. Why? Is because if the globe is $300 trillion in debt, and that's a rough estimate, it could be higher, could be a little lower, but it can't be paid. So to settle this, once and for all, you would have to go to what they, what they call a universal debt jubilee, a global jet debt jubilee. But since the economy is based on a debt-based system, to do that, you put a lot of people out of work, a lot of people would starve, and a lot of people would riot and tear down the infrastructure. So to do that, to prevent that, you would actually have a universal basic income. Preferably, you would have the universal basic income first and then the debt jubilee. Now, if I was a conspiracy theorist, and I truly believe that this is not real and this is planned, a plandemic, as people say, it wouldn't be for some no bullshit vaccine. There's no bullshit chips in somebody's arm. This would be big enough this would be large enough to get everybody on board because this is a problem for everybody. And how do you convince 7 billion people, almost 8 billion people to get on board with one idea? This would be it. This would be the big, a reason big enough and bold enough and actually radical enough to actually make sense. Now, if somebody had said this and said this is the reason and this is the, the plot behind the plandemic as you guys call it or the hoax as you guys call it i'd have had to stop and say hey you know what you could be right and we would have to wait and see even though i would have my serious doubts about doing it this way this is an actual very logical good reason for 200 countries to get behind this stuff and stick to it and put money behind it this would actually make sense because it's big enough, far-fetched enough, logical enough, actually, with the current environment that we have for something like this to be pulled, planned, and executed. But unfortunately, my poor conspiracy theorists think way too small. Way too small. You've been listening to small-minded conspiracy theorists that really don't know what the heck they're talking about. Local control and, and globalists domination and wealth transfer. They would not break up their system it, that they control, that they have the maximum amount of money that they need to manage with people under them. Money doesn't mean anything without people. Money doesn't even mean anything without markets. It means absolutely zero. Everybody knows that. Everybody higher up knows that. There's a, only one good reason why you would destroy your own system. It's because the system's falling anyway. And you need to rebuild it and you need people to get behind it. That's the only reason that this could possibly be a hoax, possibly be planned, possibly be a conspiracy. If you guys had come up with that idea, I could have got behind it. But unfortunately, like I said, small-minded people think about small-minded conspiracies. And you folks, you conspiracy wing nuts, disappoint me. I thought you would do better. I, who don't even believe in a conspiracy, can think of a better plan and a better reason. And a better conspiracy that lines up with the evidence, which is actually tangible and would get the attention of even people higher up in the government, even though I don't believe that this is a, that kind of conspiracy. But there you have it. This is my bone. This is what I'm throwing out to you. This is actually very plausible if you actually look up and look it up and actually uh, put all the pieces together, this would be an actual working plan if I were to do it. And I had the balls enough to, put, to try to pull it off. And oh, you'd have to have some big ass brass balls to try to pull this bad boy off because it has a very good way of imploding on you if you make a mistake. But anyway, that's all I got for this one. <laughs> this is this is actually hilarious, but, but this is BGS out. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha